levels, when it's all text on a page, that can really overwhelm our students and it raises the complexity of the text. This is a technical manual that our students use, like a software manual. The, you can see this one has highlights in it because certain revisions have been made over time. And so our students are always faced with this in the workplace and in school where things get updated. So that adds some complexity where students have to understand, um, don't do this, do this now. It's changed. Here's an example of a complex text that we all see. Um, it's, this is a Lexile score of 1240 for uh, the tax returns. So any teenager who has to start filing taxes, that's pretty high Lexile score for someone to read. Um, I like this complex sentence that is in here. Did you earn more than $6,000, are blind, and also married to an undocumented alien? <laughs> so you can see how the, these thoughts sort of build together, make something more complex. And here's an example of an unfamiliar setting that makes things complex for students. So any movie, photograph, a historical document, or something that just takes place in another place. And definitely, you know, even nothing funny in Spanish is complex because it's in another language. I talked to Mr. Brad, our music teacher. He talked a lot about students getting to middle school and high school and not being able to read the music that they are advancing to because they are falling behind in some of their reading skills and that all of a sudden reading music means they need to have those slow reading skills and be able to just focus line by line on what's going on. And so he noticed a big gap in certain students that he felt like these kids should be able to come to music and enjoy it, but they were really struggling. So that's too bad for some of our kids. Um, here's a, an example, so a simple poem by Robert Frost. But now all of a sudden we're adding layers of meaning and sort of subtleties in a text. So the words are simple, but there is, you're just um, deriving meaning from the text. So it may be simple, but you reread it and reread it and students can read. This is from the National Adult Literacy Study, and these are all the different Lexile scores of documents that these different professions are required to read. So I think I like to see teachers are up there in the almost 1,400. But it's just interesting to see when you see some of the, I'm going to show you some examples of titles that we use in school and where those would match up just with craftsmen, construction workers are 1,100. That's a pretty high Lexile score. So here's some examples, like To Kill a Mockingbird is an 870. And we have our freshmen read that. Um, Huckleberry Finn is a 990. The Book Thief is a 730. So you can see that a lot of classes use these texts, and they are not like the top of the Lexile score. Here's some more examples. I like that Charlotte's Web is higher than The Sun Also Rises as far as a Lexile score. And The Hunger Games is up there in the 800s, right near To Kill a Mockingbird. So it's a um, it's really complex thinking that students can start um, doing. These are like some of the discussions that you can have with the students, what the themes are that that one, that one assignment in here addresses. They even break it up by how long this discussion would take you to hand out documents and have these little, ask a couple of questions about the documents. So if you don't have a Discovery Education account, you can enter this passcode and it will get you in. You can set up your own personal account. Or if you just want to try like a generic account, if you're not a Sandboard person, you can use our username and password to log into this generic account. You'll be able to like customize stuff, but you'll be able to search and see what kinds of cool tools are in there. Um, Discovery Education is all um, the discovery.
discovery company, so that video company, and tons of videos. They have full length videos and then little clips of videos that you can break up into. So you don't have to show a class a whole movie and waste an entire class watching a movie, but you can show them little segments of movies and they break them down really detailed. So a super powerful tool. The thing that we all have access to is Britannica School. So Britannica, you're like, eh, it's an encyclopedia. What's the deal with that? This is the cool thing with Britannica, and I, I love it for students who are for differentiating classes. So when you log in, this is what you see, elementary, middle, or high. And so you can just pick your topic. I searched for Lincoln and got this. So now you can see under search results, there are different levels, level one, level two, level three. And they give you more complex search results based on the level that you choose. You can see right now I have articles selected, but you can also just choose images, videos, magazines, and primary sources of ebooks. And this thing is packed with primary sources of ebooks. It's not just encyclopedia articles. When you do, when I just chose the Abraham Lincoln like generic thing, we're still at level two. You can see over on the right it says reading level one, two, and three. We have two highlighted. So this is kind of a middle school level of Abraham Lincoln. We, we're on the article right now. We could click on the top left. There's tabs for images, related documents, and then teacher information. Oh, the other thing I want to say is when we click on reading level one or reading level three on this, it keeps, it looks really similar, but it just changes the text. Like reading level one, they take out a lot of the text. Reading level three, they add a lot of more complex words, more complex sentence structure, and some different ideas. Level one, you know, it's really simplified for elementary students. So I just feel like it's a powerful way to have your students challenge them to go up a level. Yes? So let's see if you have a Lexile so one, two, and three. Um, well, the Lexiles for one are the elementary chunk of them. So I think it starts at like 400 and goes up to 800. 48. Yeah, it's that kind of thing. And then middle school is that middle chunk, and then high school, it goes up higher. When you click on the teacher resource, let's see. This is the teacher resource for that article, and it tells you, so this is the middle school level, it tells you the Lexile score for that article is a 1030. So that was the middle level, around 1,000. You can imagine that. The other things they have here are all of the standards that this matches up with. And then over on the bottom right, they have these interactive resources that you can share with your students. So this is all in the Britannica Encyclopedia, which I was like, well, I didn't even know it was this cool. I really thought it was just this online encyclopedia, which I really didn't had no interest in until I saw this, all this cool stuff. And they were just using it at the baking school and at Memorial, I think. Do you have it, Alice? We do, this year. Yeah, so this year the high school got it and the middle school got it too. So everybody at Sanborn will get it. And I know that Epping and Rochester both have it too. We chose all the books. Yeah, we chose it over World Book because we loved all these like different levels. When I was under Abraham Lincoln, one of the tabs was primary sources and ebooks. They give you 31 choices, and these are full text ebooks with all these amazing things, all these like crazy letters that Lincoln wrote, and you can really dig down and find some powerful stuff. This is our this is the username and password that we can use today. I think Alice and I don't have our username and password yet. I just haven't been contacted by them, but I just paid the bill. So we can use this username and password today. Um, and then the high school will get our regular username and password. And if you're at another school, maybe you already know your username or password. But I just wanted you guys to be able to try it out today. So you can use that. And the third thing I want to talk about is historical newspapers. And this will be really focused on middle school and high school, so I'm just gonna give some highlights about it. One thing that I love about it is over on the top right, we have what happened on, and you can choose a date. 
So it might be a neat thing to get kids reporting out, you know, pick a day. Is this the online? Okay. Oh, the chance yes. right here. No, this is not. This is a new tool. This is called historical newspapers. Okay. It is not oh, okay. free. I'll give you the username and password at the end. This is called historical newspapers. <coughs> and I love, they have really powerful timelines that you can go in, blow up. The, the cool thing about it is that you can do a search, a search for Abraham Lincoln. It is broken up by decades, so you can see all the articles that mention Abraham Lincoln throughout the New York Times, through history, back to the beginning of time. Um, well, back to the 1800s. And it goes up to 2001, so it's used for historic purposes. But when you choose one of the articles, it's an actual PDF of the article. So I love this. This is like headlines in the New York Times. I have important news. Secret departure of President-elect, alleged plot for his assassination. Unexpected arrival in Washington. Surprise of the Harrisburg people and indignation of the Baltimoreans. And then when you actually, you can scroll down and read the whole article. I wanted to read it in funny voices because it just seemed, it was all written in this like exaggerated claim. So this is the front page of the New York Times and you can see over on the left, highly important news. And the article just goes on. But talk about a complex text, that's dense information. But you can blow it up. You can see it's from February 25th, 1861. And this is this whole very dramatic retelling of this assassination attempt on Lincoln. Um, and it's, it just seemed really cool and it was super funny to read. This is our username and password to get into it if you guys want to try it out. So let's take a little time so you guys can dig around, you can look at some of those resources and see how you might possibly use those in your classes, ask questions, ask questions to somebody else who's used them, or me, I'm here. So if you go to the LibGuide, Summer PD, do you guys know how to get to the LibGuide? All right, Summer PD and then um, online resources, and all the links are there. Yeah, online resources are complex. more tools to work with or I would present those in the second group so if you guys are going to go do something else at 9 30 then I won't share those I mean I will share those resources with you but I'm going to do that now so you guys can go see like Kate Burnell's doing a great reading thing where she's talking about a lot of tools for using the stuff that I presented so she has some neat like classroom things so you might want to go try that out or something else so I'll show you the second half of this presentation so, and then don't stick around until 9.30. So the other tools were in the other half of the LibGuide, and they're, the, they're on the right side, tools for analyzing complex texts. And so what I want to show you, so I have this whole list, how to analyze complex texts. 
docs, tools. I'm actually just going to go to the wood guide for these time. So over here on the right side, this is my favorite thing to share with students. And it is this, it's on WikiHow, so like user-created content. But they go through step-by-step step on analyzing a complex text. So now you've given the kids a letter from a slave or something, and they give you a little picture and some really simple steps. Read the text closely several times. Understand the bias rule, and they start talking about like people trying to sway you to a certain opinion. Understand the time and place. So when was it written? Where was it written? Identify the type of source. So is it a document, a letter, autobiographical, memo, anything? Who is the author? So maybe they have to do a little bit of extra research to find out who actually wrote that. Is it a group of people or a single person? Who's the audience this was attended, intended for? So that's a super powerful thing to share with students. The source's intended message, like at the time, what was that for? Why was the source created, which is sometimes the same thing? And is it credible? Is it something reliable, or is it on somebody's blog? And list the things you can determine about that historical period. So when was it written, and what do we know about those people writing it? And then the limitations of the source. So think about like how doesn't this work today? There's a lot of cool things you can do when you get kids to like slow down with a single source. So I love that. I really like that um, tool. That I get too many tabs open. I use myself. The other thing that is, this is from the National Archives, and it's called Docs Teach. And so this resource has already existing documents from the National Archives where people have custom made these lessons, these online interactive lessons about these documents. Um, so over here, thousands of primary sources selected, ready to use tools for teaching with those documents, and these are created by teachers. These are created by the National Archives. Well, they've been archived by the National Archive. And then um, over here, you can create your own assignment over a document. So if you just have a complex text that you want your students using it, you can customize the documents from the National Archives. So I went into Find Activities, and you can just scroll and browse through historical eras, and find some cool things. I love they had, I don't know, there was one from the Revolution where they compared two different versions of the Constitution. So like the original Constitution first draft and then the one that they finally came up with. And you would have students go through word by word and talk about what the differences are with those two documents. And you can see all of these crazy things. This is it. It's called Be the People. And they have these step-by-step -step things that you can do as a teacher. They give you a synopsis. They like walk you right through. It's all interactive. So you can have the students go right on here and see the two original documents in front of them and have some questions that they'll answer about it. Our high speed internet will eventually get us there. <laughs> um, but anyway, you can see this is what it will look like when a blown up version of this with these questions. What is the difference between the opening of the draft of the first version? What is the significance of changing the wording? Why did they make you the people in giant letters oh. instead of just the W in a big letter? So I really like that. There's all these different notes, objectives, specific questions. 
And then they have these activities. Imagine you were a delegate sent to the Constitutional Convention. Which preamble would you have supported and why? So it's really complex ways to get kids in there using these documents. So that's Docs Teach, which I love. And I mean, to go in and you could just create your own activity, I love. They have all these different things where you're, like we just saw, evaluating, comparing two different documents. But here's find a sequence. You could have a bunch of photographs, and they have to put them in order based on what they can figure out from them. Focusing on details, talk about a slow reading skill to get kids to do that. And you just enter your own documents or use the archives documents, and you figure out how you want to do it. I love this one too, weighing the evidence, like who was right in this situation. So you can use it for like slavery activities and things like that. And a cool thing with a map. So they have maps from all over the world that you can place documents in certain places and time periods. So on the left, create your own fun and engaging activities. So I love that to customize your own stuff and make a um, pretty powerful resource for your classes and customized too. They don't just have to use something else. This is, I like seeing this. So this is from the History Project at UC Davis, and they, this is what historians use to analyze a document. So it goes into such great detail of um, analyzing a document. So I love to show kids, like, this is what professors in college are using when they find some new letter or something. So I love that, like Brian for your AP kids to be checking out that kind of thing. Using primary sources from the Library of Congress. I feel like a lot of us have seen this. There's tons of teacher activities. They give you a lot of steps that really get students engaged in the process that it's not just here or read the Constitution, which they're gonna have to do like on their SAT tests when they get to high school. They're gonna have to be using these primary source documents on those tests. It's gonna be in the Smarter Balance test that all of our kids are taking. There's gonna be primary source documents from US history, like it's been said. They're gonna have to be able to do this, so let's make sure that they're trying to use these in classes before they're faced with that test. Back to the uh, UC Davis. Yeah. Link, just so I can copy that. Yeah. <coughs> UC Davis is here. Historyproject.ucdavis.edu. It's right under her. Oh, no, so it is on the lib guide. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Pam, do we need a special password to get in there? No, all this stuff is free. Everything here is free. Library of Congress, National Archives, and everything I'm going to show you now is free. No passwords. Um, so, yeah, lots of cool teacher tools from Library of Congress. Um, I like this at Harvard. They have all of their freshmen go through their reading and writing center, and they need to learn how to do a close reading of a document. So freshmen at Harvard, this is what they have to do. Serious process, and check this out. It's like step by step, read with a pencil in hand. Look for patterns in the things you've noticed, repetitions, contradictions. Ask questions about the patterns. Like really, really complicated things. So I love that. And then Harvard set up a lib guide too called Reading Critically. Um, that you have to pass this like exam your freshman year in order to take any advanced classes at Harvard. So this is their lib guide called Reading Critically. And here's previewing. Look around the text before you start reading all of these detailed questions. Annotate, you know, have a pencil in hand when you read. Outline, summarize, and analyze. Look for repetitions and patterns. Contextualize, compare and contrast. So I love seeing what the expectations are at the college level for high school people. And you guys can see what our expectations are when they get here. So middle school people can connect and elementary same. So. I like making those connections so our kids are ready for something like Harvard someday. Yes, sir. It's summer PD, so right at the very top. Mm -hmm. And then 
the tab that I need is this one, online resources and complex texts. And then they're all on the right. Have you seen um, kind of those with free uh, docs teach? Yeah. There's a thing called from the National Archives called Digital Vaults. No. No. Um, it's really cool because they take in something like, well, I don't remember how many thousands of documents or thousands of documents. And you can kind of create your own pathway. Do you mind pulling that? No, not at all. Just do digitalvaults.org all one word. This is digitalvaults.org from the National Archives. It's, um, yeah, it may take a little while to run. Sure. It's very complex. Wow. Yeah. Loading records. 
The other thing, so this is this new one that everybody's kind of talking about. It's from Renaissance Learning, and it's called ETOS, A-T-O-S. And they say that they can determine a level more, I was going to say more better, more better than the Lexile score. <laughs> um, they feel that their analysis really gets into more grade level information and that they can give it a better score for books and for text. So same thing, you have to copy and paste a text or search for books. And they don't have all the books in there. Like Lexile has most books included. They don't have a ton of books. But it's interesting, they were just trying to move everything up grade levels like the Common Core and match things up. The other thing that I really liked is the reading maturity metric. So especially if you're working with novels, I think um, an example, so they give it a score from literature and science, health documents, things like that. They give the score based on word use. So something like um, Toni Morrison's Beloved has like an 800 level Lexile score, but its reading maturity is 11th grade. So it might look like it, oh, my sixth graders could read this, but you don't want them reading that. So this actually gives you a reading maturity metric. How so to find that reading maturity? So they go through and talk about it in this paragraph where they take all aspects of the thing, word frequencies, they take certain words um, that might be too mature for students, so body parts and details, vocabulary, all sorts of things. So a lot of times Lexile, it will give something a really low Lexile score just because it's short or just because there's not a lot of text on the page, it doesn't have density of information. So some but something really mature may be not appropriate for or something. So it's another thing, you create your own account and it's free, and it's just a way that you can analyze your own text. Yeah, it seems like a, um, that it could be a useful tool for you guys to have. So my presentations are just embedded on the LibGuide down below, so if there was something, if there's like a password you forgot and you get back to school, you can just go through and find all my stuff. All those things are here. <clears throat> so feel free to use all that and all the different tools that I have. And then at 9.30, go to um, Kate Burnell is gonna share all of her documents on this LibGuide too, so. If you go to her, she's talking about complex texts and using them in classes. And she has like some cool activities to share with you guys. So that might be a really useful next chunk to do. And she's a movie one over three. But look around at some of these tools and keep searching, ask questions, or grab more food and coffee. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Pam Lobo, Lexile
Did she need a flash? Yeah. 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 Yeah.